Hey guys, welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So uh, I think it's probably high time that we uh, had another meatloaf episode. Um, no better way to connect a bunch of um, kind of separate uh, items together, uh, announcements, preparations, uh, new items in the shop uh, than a meatloaf, right? So um, I got a ton of new stuff to show you guys. Uh, preparations for the bash uh, and some special guests that have shown up around the shop uh, that you guys will probably recognize. And uh, met some, uh, some new uh, fellow YouTube creators um, and done a little collaboration uh, with them as well. So uh, let's quit yapping and uh, let's go look at some cool stuff and, uh, and talk about some of this thing. Uh, some of these things and show them, okay? Because it's some really neat stuff. Okay, let's go. Okay, so this next one, I did a little uh, horse trading with uh, my friend Paul Compton, who's in uh, in the UK, and uh, he picked up a uh, kind of an interesting lot of metrology tools, and uh, he showed a video on that. And uh, there's a little link in the description to Paul's. Uh, uh, Paul's video on his metrology haul, he called it. Um, anyway, he showed some of this stuff and a couple of items uh, kind of caught my interest. Um, one of them was these uh, um, Johansson gauges here. Um, and I have one of these that's uh, actually a very, very fine uh, division. Now these are, um, these are two tenths resolution here, so one division is two ten thousandths of an inch. So uh, um, the let's move this out of the way here. Uh, we're going to look at this one because it's got some interesting paperwork with it. Um, so the ten is actually one thousandths there. So uh, now these use this, um, uh, and you guys should look this up. This is kind of cool. It's called an Abramson Abramson movement. And it's a little twisted filament, a uh, little flexure that's twisted that the, uh, the mechanism is on. It's very robust and very sensitive. And then um, what these guys did is, and I'm going to try to tip this so you can see it. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to tell if there's any glare on it, but you can bear, there's a needle there. But what they've done is they've only colored the tip of it, which is I, I kind of really like, actually. It's neat. Uh, but if you catch it in the light just right, you can see the actual needle, which is is basically uh, clear. Uh, and I think it's made out of glass. I'm not positive, though. So uh, um, I have sort of an instruction sheet, but it really doesn't talk about what this knob is for. And I don't, it may be just some kind of very fine zeroing knob, uh, but it doesn't seem to do it doesn't seem to do much. So now these are cool. They have ruby tips on them, um, which is a you know very um, um, wear resistant material. And sometimes uh, um, you use them in applications where you don't want to transfer metal from one thing to another. So if you have a metal tip and you drag a sample underneath it, you can cross contaminate it with metal. And uh, we deal with this at work. Uh, um, you know, with uh, high vacuum systems and things like that, uh, very sensitive stuff. You don't want to do have metal transfer going on. Anyway, those are uh, those are pretty cool. They're both the same. Um, this one is 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 neat because it has the uh, um, kind of the original uh, instruction sheet with it, which is really cool. Um, oh yeah, actually, this is great because uh, it's got a cross section of the. Uh, of the mechanism there and there and you can see the the twisted little filament there that's inside it okay and you know and I looked at this before and I looked at the little knob there and I'm like okay I don't get it I don't get it what it does so uh, it looks like it it may push on this mechanism here a little bit to uh, but it's it's not clear or it may change it may actually just flex that arm a little bit to change this relationship here I, I don't know Maybe somebody out there knows. Now this is a whole uh, a whole stand here uh, with a comparator on. You know they're doing some maybe some measurements uh, of gauge blocks or uh, comparative measurements here. This is a the original stand too, so uh, pretty neat. Um, I forgot what was in here. This was kind of oh this was neat because uh, it actually had the uh, oh it's an extra extra tip. 
But what was neat was it had the original little wrapping paper. See, it says CEJ uh, Sweden, and um, pretty neat. Uh, this little uh, this little paper is uh, to me kind of kind of just uh, neat that it survived this long. So uh, pretty cool. All right, so let's take a look at the next thing. Uh, he sent me a few things, and uh, a mutual friend um, uh, that lives nearby here actually uh, uh, schlepped the stuff from uh, the UK back here to California. So let's look at the next thing. Okay, so this next one is a, uh, uh, he sent me some books with this package too. And this is a book on civil engineering uh, by uh, Edward Cressy. <clears throat> now, you know, I don't know. Uh, I'm I'm interested in all kinds of stuff. So I flipped through this, and there was a few interesting things that uh, that I thought were cool, and I'll show you one of them. Um, but you know, when you're, if, you know, a fascinating thing is you know how giant projects like dams and bridges and uh, and things like that are kind of executed, right? I mean, these are very complicated assemblies per se, right? And um, um, I just love all the pictures and stuff, right? So, you know, the organization of the resources and the uh, uh, the fabrication of these items, and then the uh, you know the assembly of it, uh, it, it it's it's pretty neat. There's a lot to be learned, uh, you know, from other trades. Now, the one that I wanted to show you was uh, is a uh, a picture of uh, a dam that some of you guys may may know about. This is a uh, an interesting construction picture of the Grand Coulee Dam, and this is up in Washington. I think it's, yeah, Grand Coulee Dam. Um, and this is up in Washington. This is a monster dam up there, uh, very large. Um, and for folks that live up there, or that way, or traveling through, I believe they give tours of the the, the innards of the, uh, of the dam. And uh, they have one of the largest um, uh, standby bridge cranes uh, in existence in there, and I think it's uh, rated at almost 400 tons on the main hook, and then it has auxiliary hook that's you know 250 tons or something too, something like that. Pretty neat stuff. But this is all the forms and whatnot for the concrete that they have to pour in sections. Kind of kind of neat stuff. So so that's one book. Let's look at the next one, and uh, it's a it's a welding text, and this is by Caxton. Um, let's see if I can get to the, uh, the front, yeah, there you go, you guys can see the title page there, okay. And uh, I'm just going to go to the, the bookmark that I have here, okay, instead of flipping through the whole thing. This one's kind of, it's funny uh, because it's, it's a, a word that I might use, uh, bronzoid. <laughs> Anyway, that caught my attention. Uh, so it's basically a uh, some kind of filler rod that they use on bronze to build up or weld or whatnot for uh, propellers and things like that. Anyway, the word caught my attention because it was funny. So, all right, all right. Next one. Um, same, same. This is volume two, I think. Yeah, volume two. Um, let's take a look at this picture. Oh, this is great. You got two British guys here, um, and they've thermite welded a. a uh, a rail track together, and then they have this kind of dual handled file. And they're oh boy, I think that's I got some visitors. All right, welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. I've got a special guest here, Bruce Whittem from Get Her Out or from Gem Trek Get Her Out. So, uh, Bruce is all the way up from Australia here to go to the bash, and uh, he wanted to come by and uh, check out the shop and uh, see a few things. And uh, so he's here, and welcome, Bruce. And uh, this is pretty awesome to have you here, man. Yeah. And uh, I recognize the voice. So. <laughs> <laughs> we also have another guest here. Come on in, Ray. We got Razor Ray here. Hey. Hey. Been, been today because of last week. Yeah, yeah right. Well, yeah. So Ray's here at the shop, and you guys all know Ray. He's a he's a fixture <laughs> in, in the community. community. Yeah, yeah, right. So and, uh, uh, and he's my chauffeur. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty nice to get here on there. Yeah, so, the very happy to do that too. So, so anyway, uh, um, Bruce, uh, he brought some uh, some little goodies with him, right, that he wants to show. And uh, so, what do you say we uh, take a look at some stuff, huh? Yeah, cool. Sure. Good idea. No right. Cool. Well, first thing is um, is my logo, and. Um, Hey, but oh, sorry. Do a little bit on my camera too. Yeah, okay. <laughs> do a bit of well. okay. I can't see the thing. Yeah, so uh, Qu Quinn Barry uh, was kind enough to um, 
to fix up my logo and, and this is the result and uh, uh, Tom and Ray are the first ones to get these stickers and uh, we've also made them so that they they're actually they cut all the way around the, the oh, teeth okay. so, so that's, uh, that's for Tom Thank and, you. and I've given one to Ray as well um, and then we'll be giving some more out at the bash. The other thing is um, Tom, uh, as, as you all know, Tom loves his hammers and he's got lots of hammers and, and he bangs around all over the place. <laughs> and so I've um, I bought a, a little present for, for Tom. I've actually bought two hammers um, and uh, I need to it's, show them it's here. In there. It's in there. And there. And oh, that's cute. There. That's <laughs> one of them, Wow, that's a real special yeah. hammer, Bruce. Did you uh, did you uh, make that yourself? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a that's a flea market one. Uh, it is. Oh, yeah. really? I wouldn't spend more than two dollars on you anyway. Good. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's nice. Look at that. Oh. So, so uh, that'll go in my. Uh, um, and don't take offense to this. This is my ugly hammer collection. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I wouldn't expect it to be anywhere else. Yeah. This I hope is it's in the front of the ugly room. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll have a prominent place. This is up there with the uh, the one that Chuck Bomarito sent me uh, a couple of years ago. So uh, it's a it's, thank you very much. It's the thought it's the thought that counts. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. I appreciate that. That's and, um, yeah, that, that's, uh, that, that, that should uh, see you through. Uh, you know, and uh, just watch out it doesn't hit, come back and hit your head when you. Yeah, when I see you've, back at you. you've softened this in a little bit. So yeah, yeah. yeah we we'll practice on. That. Right. Now the other one is. Uh, um, Tom, as I've, I've put together, I'm curious uh, about this one here. Uh, so. yeah, I've, I've put together this uh, hammer. Well, if it's a handle first. It's a piece of stainless steel. <laughs> got a little hole in there. It doesn't look much like a hammer there, Bruce. It's a nice too. Got a little handle. Right? I've got a bit of a bend in it as well. And, um, and uh, this this hammer um, uh, is is quite unique actually um, because um, it's. It's, it, it's spring loaded uh, and uh, it's also self destructible. It's got a little niche in here so that if Tom really goes mad with this, this thing is going to break off and, and go somewhere else. And the handle fits inside here. And you've got to see nice, it. Nice, right. It's for hammering rings. That's for hammering <laughs> rings, that's right. And, uh, and, and especially holes, that's good for holes. Now, I'd, I'd hate to think that I. Uh, I Got some of your precious Gila coils that you use for your getter outs. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, this is this is a BSF. I don't use BSF oh. very often. Do you know what BSF <laughs> is? Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> British, British standard, standard five. Five. Yeah, yeah that's, that's it. Uh, that's that's, and it's very unique. It's way out there in obscure land. <laughs> yeah. It's very unique. It's it's more unique than metric. And so, and now if the hole is too big. Then we've got uh, one, another one here which we can screw inside. Uh, he's reaching on this one, guys. And you can see that. So, you know, he's got a bit more of a play there and uh, a smaller hole and so forth. Well, let me guess what And we we've got a cascading effect. We can add another one to it as well. And, <laughs> and so now we've got the long reach and, and more of a bit of a bounce to it. And if he needs to, we've got another one we can screw in there. And now we've got three, we've got four, four. and we've got a fifth one here. And um, the well, it's so this is quite unique, and I'm sure you're about to find some use for that. Problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, that's very special. Thank you. That is special, <laughs> all right. Yeah. So uh, there they are, guys. And hey, uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, check out Bruce's channel. He does uh, a lot of thread repairs, right? And uh, that's one of his specialties. So he's got. Tons of videos on tips and tricks for getting broken and stripped screws and uh, thread repairs and stuff like that, which is important to all guys that do this kind of work. So, uh, and, uh, and also tool making. I do a lot of tool making and I, I show a lot of uh, the tool making and uh, just general tips for people uh, to use. Yeah. And uh, sometimes I also have my, um, my um, 50 shades of swarf. I show all different types of swarf. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not nearly as fun as this. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> Group hug. Get in here, Ray. Group hug. All right. Group hug. All right. All right, guys. All the best. All right. We'll see you at the at the bash. All right. If not, look for. Um, oh yeah. Um, check the uh, description for a link to the. Uh, 
RZ Summer Bash in Southern California. If you haven't signed up, go sign up for that because it's going to be a hoot. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we got special guys like these guys here coming down and a uh, bunch of YouTube creators. It's going to be pretty neat. And, so. you know, coming from down under, you know, there's the kangaroos down there, and so I'm bouncing in and bouncing out again. <laughs> it's not boomerang, uh, right? It always uh, comes, comes back, back to you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay, so this is uh, the last one that I have from um, uh, Paul Compton, excuse me. Um, and this was one of the things that I spotted in that uh, metrology um, hall of his. So uh, this is an old uh, instrument from Thorn EMI, uh, which is a uh, ex-British company, I guess. I guess they're still around uh, uh, in some form, but uh, they used to be a big defense contractor. So. Uh, Anyway, what we have here is we have this Alina uh, Interrapid, um, excuse me, it's a bore gauge. And uh, so it has different probes and stylus, styli, styli uh, for reaching into grooves and uh, you can measure bores with it and whatnot. So I've got a couple of, uh, of ring gauges here and uh, I'll, I'll show you how it kind of works and uh, um, it's great for um, if you have a lot of bores to check and you need to check them to pretty close limits and kind of reliable, uh, reliably. So let's uh, set that aside for a sec. Um, so turn that a little bit over here. So the basic function of the thing is this has a range of uh, about 10 millimeters to 150 millimeters or three eighths to six inches roughly. Um, and uh, you can open up the legs of it like so, and then it has a, a, a retracting handle here, okay, so you can retract it and, uh, and put it into the bore. So uh, now setting this is a little, a little tricky. Um, well, I'm closer to the one inch, let's set it to the one inch right here. So basically, uh, we're, yeah, let me, uh, I got in a little closer just so you guys could see this a little better. And I'm doing a kind of a, a knock-up job here. That's uh, um, am I going out? Oh, I'm going in, going the wrong way. So at some point, the uh, there it goes. There's our needles coming up. Okay, and you kind of zero there. And like I said, I'm not doing a, a primo job here. So um, and now you, you fish it around in the bore. And you can see I need to adjust it a little bit, okay. Um, so. Okay, so like I said, it's a little tricky to adjust and then I can retract these and pull it out. Um, it also has, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna fuss with it on camera too much, okay. Um, and. I think this thing needs a little bit of help. I'm going to send it to my uh, my friend Mark at MR Tool Repair and have him kind of go through it. If it, it feels like these bushing, the leg bushings are a little bit wonky, and um, um, I don't think it should move sideways like that uh, the way it does. But uh, I'll have him take a look at it. Um, anyway, and then it has a uh, kind of a stabilizer piece here that has a couple of contact points, which is kind of neat. Um, let's see if I can get it in here without uh, bozoing it here. Oops. So it's supposed to, there it goes like that. It clicks in like so. And then this helps stabilize it in the bore. Um, so you kind of have three point, three point contact, although that's the measuring point right there. Um, and then there's two of these arms, one for the uh, smaller range and one for the larger range, right? And that just kind of gives you this three-point uh, three contact. There it goes, pull it out of there, okay. Kind of wagging around there a little bit, okay. So it's kind of neat, um, um, and it has some little extra goodies in there. And then this is a little, um, a little wrench that uh, it's kind of neat, you can uh, you stuff it on here like so, and then you can, you can unscrew the, come on, unscrew. Well, theoretically, you can unscrew the, uh, uh, maybe I tighten those up a bit. Uh, you know, I was trying to figure out how to get them out of here, right? But what you actually do is they're threaded in there and you can, you can take them out. And I don't want to take one out because I'll have to put it back in. Huh. 
Boy, I wonder if the temperature changes because uh, I didn't put them in very hard. Any very hard. So huh. uh, anyway, and then uh, it's got a a screwdriver bit here because they have a little slot on them that you can uh, uh, snug them up with. All right. So anyway, that was one of the things I was uh, that I was keen on uh, in this in this lot that he had. And um, so anyway, we did a little horse trade, and I sent him some stuff that he couldn't get in the UK very easily. And uh, he sent me this, which I had a, uh, which I was kind of interested in, and uh, we had a nice trade. So Paul, thank you very much, and uh, and uh, we'll play around with it a little bit. All right, this next one here is a is an antique store find. Uh, I was up in Petaluma recently and we stopped by our kind of favorite antique store and this was in the, one of the cases. Um, anyway, I bought this for uh, $14 and uh, it's a stare at one inch travel. Uh, it's, a it's a little sticky, uh, it's a little dirty and uh, let's see if I can, yeah here it is. Um, this bezel is is damaged here slightly but uh, I have a guy that I work with uh, uh, MR tool repair Mark and he does a great job on uh, fixing these indicators up and uh, so fourteen dollars plus whatever Mark wants to uh, to kind of spruce it up uh, is a pretty good buy on this I think all the bits are here it's not missing any of the neural knobs or you know any of the the little caps and stuff like that so there's kind of a before picture you guys can get a get a sense of uh, before and then uh, when it comes back I'll show uh, show after and uh, there's a link in the description uh, uh, to get a hold of Mark so you can uh, you can get indicators fixed yourself because uh, they're worth fixing they're fine instruments and uh, a lot of times they're just kind of dusty and gummy and uh, they misbehave so uh, anyway let's we'll check it out when it comes back okay let's take a look at these um, these are some um, very precision uh, setup blocks and uh, these come from a friend of mine uh, Alex Kern of Kern Tool. He's a, uh, a tool maker back in uh, Pennsylvania. Um, I've known Alex for oh I don't know a year and a half or something now and he and I talk back and forth on Instagram a fair amount. Well Alex is a is a tool maker and uh, and quite the uh, the grinder hand. Uh, he's, uh, he's a pretty good grinder. So these are Alex's version of um, the uh, kind of more tools uh, setup blocks. Okay, and you can see they're slightly different. Um, and you know, some of you guys may be familiar with the the Moore Special Tool Company, uh, who's actually you know one of the premier tool makers in the world. Um, anyway, these came with jig borers or jig bore tooling sets, and they're you know meant to be combined together to make uh, stack up blocks and uh, packing blocks and things like that with in conjunction with one two three blocks. Now, what's funny is they're kind of an oddball size, and uh, everybody's always kind of noticed that they're seven eighths by um, inch and a quarter by uh, one and a half, okay, and the seven eighths is kind of weird. Um, and the other thing that's odd is the, the hole centers kind of don't combine in a way that's, that's useful. It, 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 you end up having steps or weird edges uh, when you combine them with one, two, three blocks. So anyway, Alex has kind of fixed all that and made his own. His are, are three quarter, okay. Um, by one and a quarter by one and a half. Okay, so you know that's 20 millimeters by 30 millimeters, roughly by 38 millimeters. Okay, so um, and Alex is a he's a really good grinder hand. Okay, so he's done a very very nice job uh, making these. Now he's selling these, just so you know. Um, and you know if you want a pair, you can talk to Alex and, uh, and get in touch with him and you know work out the details. Um, I don't know if he's set pricing yet. He made this set for me. This is kind of a, a special set with 1032 holes. I think his normal ones are uh, uh, like these. They're quarter 20s, okay? Now, what's really neat, and um, I don't think we'll have time for it on this video, but maybe uh, he's going to send me another pair of these at some point, and uh, we'll do some on-camera inspection. But uh, he sent me some to evaluate them, okay? And let's, uh, let's take a look. Let's let the camera exposure kind of, kind of uh, 
even out there. So I did some inspecting on, uh, on these particular blocks here. Actually, let's put them in the picture so you guys can remember what they look like, okay? And uh, I did some inspection on them, and they're excellent, okay? Um, and they're, o they're slightly over the nominal size, with this, which is just what you want uh, for wear and, uh, um, you know, just in case. And if you want to lap them a little bit or whatever, you know, take them undersize, okay? Um, and he's kind of self-prescribed set of tolerance of, uh, of a tenth. Uh, dimensionally. Now, if you look at some of these numbers here, we're not going to go through all of those. Those are micro inches, okay? So some of these, he's hit parallelism within 10 millionths of an inch, okay? And uh, so it's going to be actually interesting. We'll, uh, the next set that comes in, we'll go through the inspection of a, a pair of these blocks and, uh, and how you do that and, and uh, those kinds of things. But anyway, uh, this is Alex Kern, uh, Chief Bub. Uh, I'll put a little link on the screen. Uh, he's on Instagram. I don't think he has a website yet. Uh, so Alex, get cracking and uh, make a website so folks can get a hold of you if you want to sell stuff like that, okay? And um, anyway, we'll be talking more about Alex. And uh, one of these days, I'm going to get out to Pennsylvania and visit him and a few other folks out that way. So uh, Alex, cool. Nice job. And thank you very much for the, for the beautiful blocks. Uh, good job. Okay, so this, this next story, it's, and it is a story, um, is, is just a really great example of um, the power of the internet and the power of the, uh, of the YouTube, you know, kind of metalworking community, right? Some of the things that are possible. So, uh, you know, you look at this and you go, wow, it's a crummy, crummy old wood box, right? And, you know, it's pretty, <laughs> let's call it, uh, um, you know, chowdery uh, looking box there, right? Um, now, and I'm not sure if you can read this on the uh, on the label here. Now, I bought this off eBay, okay? And what it is, is it's a Pratt & Whitney um, precision level box, okay? So this is a, a box, and it's empty, okay, uh, for a Pratt & Whitney level. Now, some of you guys may remember that I have a Pratt & Whitney level, okay? And um, in, in the video uh, Scrape Fest, um, um, we did, uh, some guys came over and we did some scraping and, uh, and one of the project that I worked on was uh, my Pratt & Whitney level, okay? So kind of out of the blue, um, I get an email from a guy, okay? And um, his name is uh, Robin uh, Rossetti um, and he's in, what is that, uh, Leo, Leola, Pennsylvania, okay? And uh, he kind of uh, um, put himself out there and uh, offered to do a, a collaboration together. And, um, uh, and one of Robin's specialties is scraping, okay? And um, so, you know, we kind of came to, an, a, came to a, 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 an agreement and uh, we decided to do a, a collaboration of which this box is kind of part of that, okay? So what I'd like to show you now is some of Robin's fantastic scraping work, okay? And uh, Robin, he's a real smart guy, okay? Uh, super whiz at electronics and stuff like that. Uh, here's a little link to his channel. Please go check it out. Um, Bombard him with subscriptions and comments, please, because uh, he's a guy worth knowing, all right? Um, he's turned me on to uh, these electronic uh, uh, amplifiers and gauge heads for doing uh, metrology um, and kind of guided me through the ins and outs of some of the, uh, some of the features on some of those. So um, good guy to know. Anyway, he's got a video on, on, the sc on scraping and many other things. So let's, let's without further ado, let's get to this. So here's, here's my Pratt & Whitney level, and you can see that it looks a hell of a lot better than it, uh, than it used to, and you know, it fits in the, fits in the crummy looking box, okay? Um, anyway, Robin said, hey, listen, I do scraping, you know, and not just any kind of scraping, he does scraping in the tradition of the Moore Special Tool Company, okay, which is a very particular, kind of high-end scraping, uh, you know, 80 points per inch kind of, uh, kind of scraping. And it has a very distinctive look to it, okay? Um, 
which you'll see in just a minute. And I got some pictures of uh, that I'm going to include with this too, so you can kind of see. Anyway, Robin offered to recondition my level, which he did, and uh, he did the sides and everything. Well, what he also did was he did the bottom. Okay, let's take a look at that, and hopefully you can kind of see that. All right, and uh, um, speck of weasel snot on there. Anyway, look at that. It's it's absolutely gorgeous. So he he surface ground this okay first just to get down through the rust and and all that. And then it was very very flat to, at that point. So what he did was he just uh, went over it and kind of scraped it and flaked. Well, it's not really flaking. It's frosting, um, in in kind of the more tradition. Okay, so hopefully you can kind of you kind of catch that. Now. There's something going on here, and I'll explain that, and you can actually see it in Robin's video if you go look at it. So after he was, uh, when he was surface grinding, he, he exposed a, uh, a, little, a little porosity pit in the actual cast iron, so not much you can do about it other than, you know, mow this all the way down to dig it out. So what he did was he filled it with some, um, some Stay Bright solder. Uh, or solder, you know, if you're uh, from uh, the pedantic uh, countries uh, uh, of pronunciation. Um, anyway, uh, he filled it with with solder, and then uh, and then just went ahead and scraped over it, and it's it's fine. It just sticks out just a little bit, but it's it doesn't uh, affect the uh, the usage of this. So anyway, uh, Robin did that work for me, and uh, it, it, it's spectacular. I'm I'm just like ecstatic as to the results. So. Uh, this will be coming up pretty soon. We got to make some uh, thermal isolators and then uh, uh, put the vial back in and um, uh, and then calibrate the whole thing. So uh, and then this level is is back from the dead, literally, right? And I and on top of that, I have a lovely box that uh, well, I don't know. Lovely might be uh, stretching it a little bit, okay? Um, you know that it, it goes into okay check this out look at this it's got even got a little it's got a little ball detent and a little latchy latchy chingus in here uh, to uh, so when you when you slide this in it click it clicks in pretty cool huh anyway Robin thank you very much and uh, uh, we'll be showing more of your uh, more of your scraping work here when I uh, when I work on the, uh, the thermal isolators on this on the level and um, and please, guys, go check out Robin's channel. Um, he's a guy worth knowing, and uh, he does some really interesting stuff on that. And throw him some feedback, if you would, please, on uh, on, on these kinds of things. Okay.